So let's get into our nutrition questions. My first question uh, that I've got for you is what, uh, what would you consider are the three most important aspects of nutrition if your number one objective is to burn fat? Yeah, the number one thing I think for people or for my clients is to really determine what their goal is and make it realistic because we can only burn fat at a certain speed. So if we're, our goal is to lose fat and we lose 10 kgs in the first three weeks it's not genetically possible for us to do that as a human so what we've done essentially is deteriorated a lot of muscle tissue mm-hmm. so the negative behind that is yes that's great we've lost lots of weight which is exciting but what we've in turn is slow down metabolism down from not mm-hmm. having the muscle tissue there we'll probably and, be a bit flabbier too I yeah guess. for sure <laughs> i mean we need as much muscle tissue as possible really so by burning that muscle tissue down that's when we get that that cycle where people will lose 5 kgs, gain 7 kgs, lose 7 kgs, gain 13 kgs, and the cycle mm-hmm. will continue. So we really need to make sure that we do know that when losing fat and fat only, slow it down a little bit and make sure that it is quite realistic. Okay. Would be my, my number one, number one. Um, secondly is just tracking. I always get my clients to track stuff because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. So if we have it written down and things aren't working as well as what we wanted, but we prescribe something, then we can look back and try from there. But if we don't track it, we don't actually know. So is that like what's using a wrong. food diary? Food or diary of some form. It doesn't have to be even that accurate, but it's just tracked in some way so we can manipulate it from there. That's I think it's uh, essential no matter what the goal, yeah. but especially for fat loss, because mm-hmm. marketing today I think it's, it's uh, altering what people think a little bit. Like we could have 100% fat free on sugar. Mm-hmm which is correct, but if you don't know that, people can be eating anything and say, oh, it's fat-free, it's fine, it's mm-hmm. all good, but uh, it's still straight sugar, so we're still going to gain fat from it. So Yeah, and most of the, the most marketed foods are quite often the worst ones for yeah, us as for well. For sure, <laughs> yeah, natural bars and so on, and people think, oh, that's great, it's natural, it's good for me. So if I can actually have a look at that with my clients and educate them about those those things that aren't really that good for them mm-hmm. would be number two and um the last one would be people i think try too hard they cut down their diet go with the amount of calories they're eating way too much exercise way too much and the body just rejects it so it starts sending out cravings for different foods or the body starts getting too sore and then we give up two weeks later we start off with his and raw but we're back at kfc or mcdonald's three mm-hmm. weeks later so it is really making sure that you're on the right path you go in a decent steps and not just go to guns blazing mm-hmm. so taking small steps for sure yeah yeah be patient with it because it'll, it'll happen over time okay so just to reiterate those points again so number one is to be realistic be realistic and actually know what you're wanting to achieve yeah which is possible without deteriorating muscle tissue mm-hmm. secondly would be to making sure that we are f- logging it so we can Planning, make changes yeah. as we go through and then lastly just don't overdo it just mm-hmm. be patient don't try too hard yeah Okay, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, Simple advice and I hope our listeners will uh, put those tips uh, into practice.